Across the world, people grow rice differently, depending on their environment. For upland rice, seed is either broadcast or sown in pockets. For rice grown in inland valleys or irrigated systems, it's often established by transplanting young seedlings. Transplanting rice helps to save seeds. It saves water and it allows you to select the best seedlings for transplanting. Transplanting also gives the crop a considerable advantage over weeds and makes it easier to weed and manage the crop later on to obtain a good yield. Farmers in Sagueso village in Mali learnt about the benefits of integrated rice cultivation in inland valleys through participatory learning and action research or PLA. Before PLA we wasted a lot of seed because we didn't know better. We practiced direct seeding. We sowed before the rain started. If rains were delayed, the seed spoiled in the soil and you are obliged to sow again. Afterwards we learned to establish seed beds. We first sow the seed in a seed bed and then transplant the seedlings to the field. We no longer waste seed. With direct seeding, we wasted a lot of seed. Rice plants from a properly established seed bed can be easily transplanted because a good seed bed produces good quality strong and straight seedlings with a uniform green color and well developed roots. Strong seedlings give your crop a good start. Making a good seed bed is not difficult but there are six key principles to consider. These are proper timing, selecting a good location, the size of the seedbed, using quality seed, respecting an appropriate seed density, and properly managing the seed bed. Let's look at these one at a time. We'll show examples of both inland valley rice cultivation and irrigated rice as the key principles are the same. First of all, when is the right time to prepare your seed bed? Many farmers establish their seed beds before the first land preparation. This is usually too early because by the time the field is ready, the seedlings may be too old for transplanting. To give you an example, on the left you see two week old seedlings. When transplanted, these will tiller properly and give a good yield. In the picture on the right, you see seedlings that are too old. They'll produce fewer tillers and give a lower yield. So carefully plan your seed bed and land preparation, as seedlings should not have more than four leaves at the time of transplanting. At this stage, seedlings usually are about two weeks old. In some regions, because of cold, it may take a little longer. The site or location of the seedbed is the second principle to consider. Above all, seedbeds should be near a water source and not in the shade of a big tree. Also, consider whether it's a safe place, away from thieves and animals. If possible, have your seedbed close to your field. As you know, once the seedlings are uprooted, you have to transplant them as quickly as possible. This will avoid the roots dying out and damaging the plant. Also, take a closer look at the soil. Your seed bed should not be too sandy and retain sufficient moisture. Applying organic matter before sowing will greatly benefit your seedlings. Thirdly, it's important to know what size your seed bed should be. The basic rule is to use 1 meter by 10 meter seed beds, as these are easy to manage. When seed beds are too wide, you risk damaging the seedlings when pulling them out. This size also allows you to easily calculate the number of seed beds needed for your entire rice field, as we'll see later. 
Now that we've prepared the seedbed at the right time, in the right location, and of a size that makes it easy to manage, we can start sowing our seedbed. Our fourth key principle is to use quality seed to obtain a good crop. Good seeds are healthy seeds that have been harvested, sorted, dried and stored properly in airtight containers. To obtain good seed, you need to use rice which has been well developed. The dried seeds are stored in a jar. The inside of the jar is treated with shea butter. If you don't have shea butter, you can use paint. Seeds can be given a kickstart by pre-germinating them before sowing. Soak the seeds in a cloth or jute bag for one day to allow them to absorb water. Withdraw the seeds from the water and keep them in a ventilated place until they germinate after one to two days. Our fifth principle is about applying the right seed density. Farmers in general produce too many seedlings in their seed beds. By sowing too densely, you waste your money. In fact, you lose money twice. By sowing your seed bed too densely, seedlings may take six weeks or longer before they're strong enough to be transplanted. And as you now know, old seedlings do not tiller well, and hence your yield is drastically reduced. It is this sort of information that people need around here. When sowing a certain amount of seed on a given area, the amount may be too much. When seed germinates under such conditions, the seedlings won't be strong because they grow too closely to one another. If you transplant such seedlings, they break easily. Through PLA, we learnt about rice cultivation and about how to set up a seed bed. We only need two kilograms of seed now compared to five kilograms in the past. Nowadays we don't use more than two kilograms in the seed bed. So how can you calculate the amount of seed needed to transplant your field? The basic rule is simple. For one seed bed of 10 square meters, you need a maximum of 2 kilograms of good quality seed. And with this, you can transplant a surface of 500 square meters. To establish a seed bed, it's absolutely crucial to know the area you want to transplant. You need to know the area to be transplanted and the amount of seed needed before you start. There's a certain amount needed to transplant one hectare. If the work is well done, you can transplant one hectare with only 30 kilograms of seed. There you are. Now you know the amount of seed needed. Depending on whether the fields are located in the higher parts of the inland valley, in the valley bottom, or in an irrigation scheme, farmers establish and manage their seed beds differently. Let's take a look at how farmers in Zagueso in Mali manage their seed beds for plots located in the higher parts of the inland valley. By carefully preparing and leveling the plot, you avoid seeds being washed away by rains to one side of the seed bed. Break up the clods to obtain a fine soil texture and add organic matter. This makes it easier for your seeds to germinate and develop strong roots. Raise the edges to avoid the rains washing away your seed or seedlings. Remember that a low sowing density gives stronger seedlings that can be transplanted at a younger age. Once sown, cover the seeds with soil. To protect the seed from birds 
and avoid the seedbed from drying out, built a shelter about half a meter above the seedbed. Some farmers use branches of eucalyptus, as this resists the termite attacks, or sometimes they use stalks of millet. Now that you've finished preparing your seedbed, regularly water the seedbed. In less than a week, the seedlings have become pretty strong and the shelter can be removed. In the valley bottoms, on the other hand, rainwater runs down the slopes much faster. So carefully consider the following points. When setting out the lines, make sure the long side of your seedbed is perpendicular to the slope. Also, it's important to elevate your seedbed by about 10 centimeters to allow drainage of excessive water and avoid your seedlings being washed away during heavy rains. Raising the edges makes water management easier. After sowing the seed at a low density, cover the seeds with soil and add straw to protect them from birds. The straw can be removed after three to four days. In some areas, frogs may crawl under the straw and destroy part of your seed bed. Farmers in Zagueso add a little salt in the ditches around the seed bed to stop the frogs entering their seed bed. In the irrigated zones, the plots for the seed bed are carefully leveled, after which the soil is puddled. A properly leveled plot allows good drainage of the water, which will favor the development of strong roots. After you've drained the water, throw the seeds to properly fix them in the mud of the seed bed. As such, they'll not be washed away by the irrigation water. Some farmers throw handfuls of pulverized cow dung on top of their seed. They notice that by doing so, they not only improve the soil health, but also reduce damage by birds. So, what have we learnt? A good seedbed depends on six key principles. Proper timing, selecting a good location, the size of the seedbed, using quality seed, respecting an appropriate seed density and properly managing the seed bed. Start preparing your field before preparing your seed bed as seedlings should not have more than about four leaves at the time of transplanting. Older seedlings will give fewer tillers and less yield. The location should be close to the field and a water source. In inland valleys Seed beds should be perpendicular to the slope and well leveled. A seed bed of 1 meter by 10 meters makes it easier to calculate the seed rate, to manage the seed bed, and to uproot the seedlings at the time of transplanting. Use good quality seeds. For one seed bed of 10 square meters, you need a maximum of 2 kilograms of seed to transplant 500 square meters in your field. Protect your seed bed with palm leaves or rice straw and keep the soil moist. Only when you take care of all of these aspects will your rice crop be off with a good start. I'm fair. We want to do anything to make sure our people master and understand all of these aspects. Our children, who do the work, have not received adequate training, and the older people with experience have retired. So these are real challenges. Around here, some young people are leaving the rural areas. This has been going on for a long time. But nowadays our children understand that staying in the village and growing rice and vegetables in the off-season is more profitable than leaving Babamako or Senegal. 
This year, in our village alone, about 40 youngsters bought a motorbike with the profits they made in agriculture. Those who've made a fortune outside are very limited. Now we no longer need to sensitize our children and discourage them from leaving. The benefits of the work done in the field are very visible. Those who left now envy those who stayed in the village. Yeah. 